thank you so much for dropping by my name is Katrina and this is my channel create something pretty I have a video today that is going to be very mixed um, I have some sewing tips I have a little bit of what happened over the weekend um, a little bit of knitting a little bit of fabric um, and at the very end I'm going to include the much requested video uh, a bit of an overview of my cover, cover stitch machine. Uh, I'm very new to using my cover stitch machine and I really don't use it that often. Uh, I do use it but yeah just I forget what I'm doing after a while because it's been a little, little bit between um, uses. So uh, I've shown you what I know <laughs> and uh, hopefully it's helpful to you. Uh, yeah so I thought as well I'll show you some tips, uh, sewing tips that you may not know. I do see people doing these things and it makes me cringe sometimes. I'm like, oh, you're going to wreck your item. So I um, thought I'd just include them. Some of you probably know them. You just don't want to use them. You don't need to. But I thought I'd include them as well, just in case there's people out there who need help with these things. So um, hopefully that's helpful. So I first, I wanted to talk about what happened, what I've been doing this week. So um, yeah, it's been a bit of a fun week. Um, um, before I do, I'm wearing my Itch to Stitch Sabu top, I can't say the name. Um, I made this quite some time back. I'll put some photos of me in wearing it. I still do not like the way the band went in at the bottom, but it's really nice and warm and it's been quite cold lately. So I'm so I'm wearing today, it's very comfortable. So that's what I've got on. So yeah, um, so this weekend just been this is totally unrelated to sewing, <laughs> but there's a reason why I'm saying it, I promise. Uh, the new series of Bridgerton has been released. If you didn't know, it's been released. I was so excited. <laughs> um, so it's season three and I was, I sat down and I was going to have my breakfast and watch my YouTubing friends and then I realized that uh, that was on and I'm really sorry but <laughs> I watched, I spent all morning watching um, Bridgerton. I watched the whole series and that meant that I then had to keep my hands busy. So I did some knitting and I worked on my sweater. I'm working on the Easy Eyelet Yoke Sweater by Knititude. And I got a fair bit done. <laughs> I'm pretty happy about it. Um, This is how far I have gotten. Um, Yeah. That's where I'm, it's at at the moment is a lot. It is a lot. Um, and it is so fun to knit this. This yarn is beautiful to work with. So this is the neck. It sort of goes on here. I have a lot of extra stitches on there at the moment. So I've done the one, two, three. I've done my fourth um, eyelet increase. And I'm really not sure what happens after here. So uh, it would be really interesting to see what happens. But I just, I really love it. I just really enjoying it it's just really easy I'm just I'm not sure how I'm gonna go now that there's so many stitches I might slow down a bit it might hold me up a bit but yeah that's what I did this weekend and I really really enjoyed it it's such an easy knit and this this yarn is so soft and squishy I just really like it I put it on a longer circular um the needle this time just because it was getting to be so many stitches and yeah there's enough there um, this, this is the right size circular to keep me going nicely. So that's what I'm working on. That's what I did this weekend. And then during the week, uh, I worked on my So Autumn denim items. And I don't want to tell you too much about that. Um, I'm hoping to keep that all for next week because, uh, yeah, there's a bit of a surprise <laughs> coming with it. something else that I've made. So, um, yeah, so I have been very, very busy every like I cut out this item this last weekend just been and I've been sewing every single day this week and I have finished it last night so I'm really really excited and I can't wait to tell you about it but I can't tell you about it so I'm keeping that for next week and I will have a video out all about so autumn denim what I ended up making how my jeans went and um yeah so I'm um, hope hopefully you guys are all set and have your things ready you're not having to any, any trouble and it's all going smoothly so yeah so autumn denim is coming up very very quickly um I, I may as well talk about that now so yeah it's so autumn denim has been run by myself and three other youtubers from Australia uh we decided we wanted to 
make things out of denim because it was just the perfect time of year uh autumn our weather sometimes it's warm and then sometimes it's cold it's sort of that mid-season and i know at, in the other hemisphere is it's well, I assume it's getting it's quite similar uh so it's a really good time to be making something out of denim and I wear it all year round so I assume everyone else does as well I don't I've not lived in the country where it snows so I don't know about that I can't speak for anyone there but yeah so we decided to make something that would be suitable for everybody so I decided I wanted to make jeans and yeah so that's what I've been working on so yeah the entries are finishing up very very soon you need to get all your items in on the 31st of may and you need to put your finished item under the hashtag so autumn denim 2024 please make sure you remember to put the 2024 on the end so that we don't miss you and you also need to tag myself so that i'm uh, create something pretty my instagram name's similar um it just has hashtags, um, like underscores in between each word on my Instagram. And you need to also tag Sewing Scenes with Deb, um, DB Designs and Sewing Australia, and Hayley from the Hay Meadows. Now, she is surrounded by Muppets on Instagram, so you make sure you use that um, Instagram name so that she can see your entries. It's very, very important. Uh, so, yeah. Make sure you put that on Instagram on the 31st. Um, I'm pretty sure the girls will know to allow extra time for the time differences because um, we're a little bit ahead of a lot of the world except for New Zealand. So, um, yeah, so we'll make sure you put that as well. Uh, and I think that's everything. Um, tag people, use the hashtag, uh, post your things by the 31st, and that's, that's it. Um, if you still want to tag between now and then, your work in progress make sure you use the, the hashtag but put wip in front of it so hashtag wip so autumn denim 2024 don't forget you also still have until the 31st if you wanted to buy some denim from western warped they have 24 percent off their denim up until the 31st so you, that that discount is still running and you can still get 20 percent off at the petite dressmaker off any pattern or bundles um, yeah, you got until the 31st of May for that as well. So that's coming up really, really quickly. There's only, after this video, it's just over a week. Or maybe it's about a week by the time I release my video. I normally release them on Fridays. All going well, will be out on Friday. So yeah, and that's Australian time too. So if you're in another country, it's a bit earlier. So unless you're in what, uh, New Zealand. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's so autumn denim to get your entries in i'm really excited to see what you've all made um we may uh the draw will probably be later in the week i assume so that we can get a chance to look through all your entries so yes and um we'll let you know who has won the prize will be uh pulled out of a hat or um random every random sort of prize there's no judging involved so everyone has a chance to win and also it's Anyone in the world can be part of this. Um, you can all enter. It doesn't matter where you are. So I'm really excited to see what you've all made. Get your entries in. So um, the next thing I need to talk about, I have had my kids home for quite some time. Uh, they were sick for a lot of May, which has held me up quite significantly. <laughs> and um, I've been stuck home. I tend to get really stuck home when they're sick. And I needed to get out of the house so bad. And I had this, I just had this thing in my head. I wanted to get this particular poplin from Spotlight. And I wanted to go and make a shirt out of it. So I ended up, I finally had the kids back at school. So of course, I went to Spotlight, <laughs> as one does. <laughs> Got some time to myself. And I did go and buy some fabric. Um, you might see it sitting here. So yes, I went and bought some fabric. I also had seen the day prior that uh, Nerida Hansen had on Instagram. She mentioned that Tara Reid had released her own fabric um, and it was now available at Spotlight. And I was very interested in having a look at that as well. It's not what I thought I was getting. <laughs> But and oh, if you didn't, if you don't know, Tara Reid is Australian designer, Australian designer. So um, gonna support our local, our local people, especially if you're in Australia. If you're in your country, I assume you would do the same. Support your local makers as well. So this is what I got. <laughs> this 
is this beautiful poplin. I actually got two and a half meters of this. Uh, I've washed it and I've ironed it and I put it in the tumble dryer to try and make it a little bit softer. It is your typical poplin sort of quality that you'd find at Spotlight. And it has these beautiful moths in it. It's actually called Tara Reed 2023 Night Moths is what it says on it. So it's absolutely gorgeous. I just, I'll put a picture in of the that fabric that I was going to get. Only reason I didn't get it, I won, oh, there's a couple of reasons. Um, I would have liked it to be small scale and not, I think it was a little bit niche. So I kind of, I uh, don't know. I didn't know if I would wear it, but I really liked it. And the other thing is the color, that tone of blue, I just, I feel like it just doesn't do me any favors. It doesn't look good against my skin. So I, yeah, I just decided not to in the end, though I still am thinking about it. It hasn't left my head. I think, just think it's really pretty. So I'd love to make a shirt out of that. So yeah, I got this one instead. And I do think it's, it's definitely more my color. I am thinking about making either, um, oh, what are they called? I can't, slightly, I cannot think of the name. Um, are they, oh, I can't think of the name. <laughs> oh, this, the shirt I want to make is called The Journey and I bought it just recently. So Liberator, that's their name. So yeah, The Journey shirt I want to make um, this into. Uh, either that or I want to have another go at uh, Helen's Closet Gilbert Top. So that's what I'm thinking about doing with this. I uh, just would like a nice shirt. I even thought about making the Donnie, but I think I want to try and find another shirt pattern that I like. One that actually does button up. So, yeah, I made something the other day where I did buttonholes and it was nice and stable and, yeah, I can't say too much more. So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to make with that one. I just think it's really pretty. Um, I'll just bring it closer so you can see because I do forget to do that. I hope they're cornflowers or, um, I can't, um, no. I can see the word. I can't pronounce it. Um, I keep thinking echinacea. Echinacea? I don't know. The flowers and then the little moths. Just really pretty colours in it. I really liked them. I just think they look really stylish. I think I can do that. I don't know. I think as a shirt they'll look good. So, yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing with that one. Um, they had a big sale while I was in there. They had 50% off the poplins. I actually didn't know that when I went in. So I was just, I was going to get it anyway. But just really turned out really, really well that it was on sale. So 50% off Poplin, they had 50% off Rayon, and just about everything else in the store was 40% off. When they have 40% off at Spotlight, I normally go to the um, the plain fabrics because the, I always find the printed ones go on sale, but the plain ones don't. So when they have a store-wide sale, that's what I normally go for. I did get a piece, a, a knit fabric. Um, it's currently on my clothes and it's quite wet, so I haven't brought it in, but I'll put a picture of it in. It was sold as an assorted knit fabric. Now, I don't know exactly what it is, but it has really, really good recovery. It is a really nice burgundy red. It's just my color red. I really liked it. So um, it was a reasonable price. So I grabbed it. Uh, now, I would like your help with this one. Do you know what it is? Um, it's quite different on either side. It One side's a lot more. It's not so much shiny, but it is shinier than the other side. And I'm not sure, like, I wonder if it's like a ponty. It's fairly fine though. And I've only ever seen ponties that are quite thick. So I'm not sure. It's It doesn't, when you pull it, it doesn't really shear very much. So I'm wondering if it's like an athletic knit or if it's a ponty or something like that. Um, if you know what it is, please let me know. I'm trying to put in footage of it so you can see all these things and see what you think it is. So I'd really like to know because I don't want to make something that's uh, got a lot of spandex in it and it makes me feel hot. So um, that'll sort of alter what I decide to do with it. But I'm starting to think it might have a bit of spandex or what it's lycra. I'm not really sure. <laughs> so, yeah, that, I bought that as well. Um, I actually got quite a bit of this. I ended up getting the remnant piece as well. There was only like a meter left and she gave it to me for like $2. So I got that as well. So I have quite a bit of this fabric now. And I also picked up this absolutely gorgeous um, sweater knit. It is really nice and soft. I haven't washed this one yet because I'm really a bit scared to do it. <laughs> I'm not sure how it's going to go, but it's this beautiful sort of mild, um, very soft brush style sweater knit. It's really nice on the inside as well. Uh, and it's sort of stretchy and quite doesn't really shear like some of them do. And it's not as well stretched this way. 
So I really was impressed with these. I've had my eye on them for a while. When that came on sale, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I really shouldn't, but I'm just going to do it. So, oh, so wish I had a bit more of this. I was thinking about making um, the LB Pullover by Paper Theory. Or uh, I was thinking even the toaster sweater, the one with the longer size with the, um, the side split. I haven't made that one yet. I've made the other one and I wasn't that keen on it on me. But I would really like to try the other one as well. And I think this would be really nice in that. I really need jumpers at the moment. I really want to try and work on my winter wardrobe. So how are you guys going with Me Made May? I hadn't, oh, I totally forgot about that. Uh, I have really dropped off. <laughs> I'm not doing a good job at all. Um, I think I just got too busy and my kids were sick and I just, I missed a few days and then I just didn't get back on the bandwagon again. So uh, yeah, I haven't done very well at all. And I was just getting a bit bored with my wardrobe. So all I had was t-shirts and um, I had a couple of nice jumpers, but I was just repeating the same thing. So I kind of dropped off. So yeah, I hope you guys are doing better than me. I hopefully this year I'll get a good chance to make a couple of items so that next year's a little bit more interesting. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's everything that I purchased. Um, I really, really love this one. I can't wait to make that up. Really not sure how to wash this. I'm a bit scared to do it. So yeah, so that's everything that I purchased. So yeah, that's all I have to chat to you about today. Um, I do have the cover stitch uh, information at the end. And I also have some tips as well. Um, I wanted to show how to open a buttonhole without ripping it open. I also have a how to read the back of a pattern, which I've been wanting to pass on quite a bit, um, especially for our hemisphere uh, or where you work in metrics rather than inches. So that, you know, because I, I do work in inches when it comes to um, using the sewing machine, but when it comes to buying fabric, I still work in metrics. So, um, yeah, I... I just thought I'd show you how to tell how much fabric you need on the back of an envelope as well. It might be useful for some people. And um, then, yeah, the cover stitch machine as well. So I've included that. I think that's everything I did. There might be something else in there. So, yeah, hopefully that's helpful and hopefully you enjoy that. Some of you will probably have better ways to do it or maybe you don't need to do it that way. You're confident in yourself as to how you do do it. But yeah, it might help some of you out there who are unsure of these things. So I'm going to insert the part with all my tips in it. Um, hopefully you enjoy them. Uh, and I'll meet you at the end to say goodbye. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this. I'll see you soon. So I'm about to show you how to open up a buttonhole using a seam ripper. I like to place a pin at the top of my buttonholes just so that I have peace of mind that when I place my seam ripper in the, to that buttonhole to open it up, that I'm not going to rip right through the top of my buttonhole. So here you can see I place my seam ripper into the hole. I am trying to juggle around a tripod. It's a little bit more difficult. <laughs> and you do have to be careful to cut straight. And I'm just being a bit extra careful here. And there we go. I cut right up to that pin and you can actually feel the bar of the pin preventing the seam ripper going any further. Make sure you stick it just behind those stitches there. You don't want to stick it up too high or you will actually go right through. But this is just a nice little bit of peace of mind that you can't actually rip that hole open too far and maybe avoid some nicks and cuts on your hands. You can actually use a chisel to do this, uh, but I haven't needed one so far with the things that I've been making. Maybe once I start making jackets and things, that might be a little bit more something that I might need. But for what I've been making so far, this is really effective. I do actually go out of shot a bit here, as you can tell. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments below. Um, how do you open your buttonholes? Maybe you have a better way of doing this. I hope this has helped out some of you out there. Next, we're going to find out how to find the metric details for fabric on a big four pattern. You'll notice on the pattern here, this is a simplicity pattern. On the back, I will be pointing to one view and a dress and then the same view on the other side of the pattern for the same dress. And all of the details on one side, one is in inches and the other one is in centimeters. 
The side in centimetres is in a different language, but the numbers still mean the same thing. So this side has got all the fabric requirements and down the bottom is also your finished measurements in the metrics on the side with a different language. I believe it's Spanish on most patterns. So uh, yeah, it has all your notions, uh, notion requirements in metrics as well. So next I'm going to tell you about some markings on my machine plate. I did not realize until recently that I have metric markings below the imperial markings on my sewing machine plate. They're also on my bobbin cover on my machine. I'm just showing you here that they all line up so you can use this as your seam, um, seam guide so you have your seams all nice and even and on my machine it's on the lower plate and on the bubble and cover as the arrows are showing and there's also to one side there is an angle guide as well as my machine is a quilting machine hi guys this is my cover stitch machine and I had so many people request to have a look at it and have a little bit of a demo on how to use it I'm still learning I have had this um, probably about two years now it's getting on a bit I've never had a proper lesson never had any formal lessons whatsoever uh, so I have kind of figured it out as I go and I've got to say it is a very expensive way of hemming <laughs> hemming your clothing uh, so this this one this was about uh, it was over a thousand but I'm pretty sure we didn't pay that that's Australian dollars so it's they're quite expensive and that's pretty much entry level uh, so I don't really spend money on much other than my sewing. I really I don't buy clothes, I don't buy fancy bags, I don't have name brand anything. Uh, pretty much my kids are my accessories, they're the most expensive thing that I own. So, um, so, yeah, so that, yeah, so this is my cover stitch and this is a bit of an example of what it does. It does these nice little hems um, and it's got the little bit at the back. Ideally this chain stitching here can you see that oh, i hope that's focusing it should be more down here it's kind of hard to tell i can't really see what i'm doing so hopefully that's focusing it should be along here so this is not really a great job but i had to rethread it and uh the under the loop underneath i don't know if that's the right terminology um it came undone so i had to rethread it and that is quite difficult to do that is probably like the worst <laughs> part of having the cover stitch machine is having to redo that bottom loop for, for this particular one well, for me personally that's what i think um the other thing is you do need the right color threads for your fabric so if you wanted to really not see that you would have to have the right thread um so i have a lot I have a lot of so these. I just get these and I like to match my overlocking thread anyway. So I do have a lot of these, but I did have to buy extra to get some to go with my cover stitch machine. So I'll show you how it works. So when you're cover stitching, you actually cover stitch this way, this way. So you can't see this. You can't see what's happening underneath. So it's really important to make sure that, you, that you're... Uh, your seam allowance is really accurate and I quite often will get out a ruler and make sure this is like say you want it a quarter of an inch or maybe you want it half inch you measure it that it is folded correctly and then I will iron it to make sure that it is is in the right spot uh, so one way I found to help myself is when I fold it so I haven't I've just eyeballed this one this is there's no accuracy here at all uh, so I have just put a pin in and the tip of the pin is at the very edge of the, the fold and so I will grab another one and I will put it I'll put it in so it's on the very edge and that sort of gives me a bit of a line hopefully you can see that a bit of a line um, to go for so I know my edges along here so then what you do now this is going to be the most difficult bit for me to film i'm not sure how to do this so that you can see it and so that i can see what i'm doing now i'm just going to take that first pin out i can feel the edge i do use my fingers quite a bit to feel where the edges are and it has these markings on on the foot <coughs> excuse me um let's move my hands away yeah it has and you want to sort of line up the edging uh where the seam is with this edge because you don't want too much sticking out otherwise you have to cut it off and it's kind of annoying 
Uh, so put your foot down. So I'm going to be in the way a little bit here. Sorry, I don't really know how else to film this. Hopefully I've done this right because I have attempted this several times and it didn't work. Um, so and now I'm pretty sure you have to engage it, put it in. Every time I do this, I'm kind of relearning it. And it's quiet. Looks like it's working. That looks good. Uh, yeah, it's quite responsive and yeah, it's um, it'll go through quite thick fabric. I just love it. Okay, so I'm well and truly off. Now, when you finish, you need to make sure. Now, I always do this wrong. <laughs> you need to make sure you go up and then back up again. I think I might have done that wrong. I don't know. Otherwise, it won't release the fabric. Oh, yes, I did it right. <laughs> I really do have to figure this out every time I redo it. Um, the memory's not as good as it used to be. And there's what I have just done. Can you see that? And then that's on the back, and I've gotten it quite close to the edge, so that's not too bad. But I do try and keep the distance between where the stitching is and the edge. I try and keep that very um, like even, the same amount all the way across. So, yeah, and um, it has a differential feed. These are your tension dials, um, stitch length. Um, this puts your needles up and down. Um, and you can, oh, it does have markings on it for your seam allowance. And uh, what else can you do with it? You can take the needles out. Um, you can sew with one needle, um, which I've seen. Um, I've seen that on more woven items where they'll just cover stitch with a one seam, uh, uh, one needle. Or you can have three needles if you wanted to, and you can move like which needle you want. So you can, if you wanted this to, the stitching line to be not as close you could have maybe just um have the outer ones the outer needles so it's a wider a wider um distance between the two threads does that make sense i'm not sure if i'm making sense uh so yeah you can do quite a bit with it uh, now the thing with the cover stitches machine though you really do need to tie your threads in you can't just leave it like this or it will that will unravel it will definitely come undone i'll give it a go i tried this last time and i messed this up can you see this hopefully you can see it i really can't tell what the camera is picking up so i'm going to have to cross my fingers and hope for the best no it doesn't want to do it <laughs> oh the beauty of, of tv is it gonna work oh yeah there we go this, this will come undone to a to a point it's coming undone so this will just undo so you really do need to um i just get a needle and i pull them through to the other side and then i tie them off so you really do need to tie them off. It comes undone incredibly easily. I see this quite a bit on my kids' school uniforms. Uh, they The hems will come undone because they're, they're so expensive. And the quality is terrible. So, uh, yeah, that's my cover stitch machine. So I hope that seeing my cover stitch machine was helpful to you and maybe some of those tips might have helped you out a little bit. Maybe you weren't aware of those things. Uh, so yeah, if you really did like it, I would love it if you'd give me a thumbs up. That's if you're still here. Um, and if you uh, want to hear more from me, um, hit, please hit subscribe. And if you want to know when my next video comes out, please hit the bell icon. So thank you so much for watching today. Next week I have a video out and it will be all about So Autumn Denim. Um, I may have something else in there as well. So yeah, keep an eye out for that next video. Um, I also, next week I do have my son's birthday uh, party that weekend. He is having his, oh no, what is he now? He's only nine. <laughs> I keep up so yeah i have i'm gonna be quite busy next week so yeah it's gonna be a very interesting week so thank you so much for watching today and i'll see you again next week bye